Hey guys, welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and security nerd Corey Nachreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting Monday, August 25th, 2014. So let's start this week's three InfoSec stories with news of big gaming-related DDoS attacks. During this weekend, news came out that a number of gaming companies were being targeted with big DDoS attacks, specifically Sony's PlayStation Network, the League of Legends Network, and Blizzard Net were all being hammered by DDoS attacks. And these DDoS attacks were able to take down PSN's uh, PlayStation Network. Uh, they went down for the weekend and didn't come back till later Monday. Uh, in any case, it seems that a number of groups have been taking credit for these attacks on Twitter. The first one was Lizard Squad. Lizard Squad uh, quickly claimed responsibility for the attack on Sony's network. However, later another Twitter user calling himself Fame God also took responsibility for the DDoS attack. In fact, he actually shared information in a blog post sharing how it was custom firmware, you know, hacking the, the Sony PlayStation firmware that helped him figure out how to do a DDoS attack would, that would take down the network. Now, none of this is actually confirmed yet, but the Lizard Squad is getting most of the credit. Now, this story actually gets a lot stranger though. During the DDoS attack, uh, one of the Sony Online executives was tweeting about this attack and how it's affecting his customers. And later in the day, Lizard Squad actually posted on Twitter a warning that the American Airlines flight that this particular executive was on uh, was, had a bomb on it. They did a, a fake bomb threat. And in fact, American Airlines listened enough that they diverted and did an emergency landing for this flight. So that was a really, really big deal. Uh, these Lizard Squad attackers seem to be script kitties that are doing it just for the lulls. And I think they're in for a rude awakening because surely the FBI and other authorities are definitely going to be after them now that they've actually done this fake airline bomb threat. Now, unfortunately, the Lizard Squad keeps on hacking. Later in the week on Thursday, they were able to take down a Twitch streaming network, which is a, a, a video streaming network that a lot of gamers use to stream games information and gaming videos. In any case, they still seem to be bragging about these DDoS attacks. Now, one thing that isn't really sure is how the DDoS attacks are happening. Now, in the Sony network case, uh, Fame God does claim that it had something to do with custom firmware, but that hasn't been confirmed. So it'd be interesting to note if it's a vulnerability that the bad guys have found, or if it's just traditional botnets, or maybe these bad guys are taking advantage of the recursive reflection attacks. Uh, that come from flaws, or not flaws, but just attributes of DNS and NTP servers. But one thing is certain, it seems that even low-level attackers, script kitties, are able to create some pretty significant multi-gigabit DDoS attacks. So if you're a business out there worried about keeping your e-commerce site online, you need to consider some DDoS protection. Now, of course, security appliances like WatchGuard have very basic DDoS protections, but nowadays attackers can do multi-gigabit, you know, 300 gigabit DDoS attacks that are going to take down even the most robust appliance. So you might want to consider one of the hybrid DDoS solutions out there that take advantage of things like ISP level throttling or content distribution in the cloud to help you survive DDoS attacks. Anyways, if there's any more updates on these gaming related DDoSs in the future, I'll be sure to keep you updated. Next up, let's talk about malvertising. This, of course, is a term used for malicious advertisements. During the week, a new malvertising campaign was uncovered in a number of really well-known sites like Java.com, DeviantArt, TMZ, Photobucket, and even eBay in certain geographical regions turned out to be serving malicious advertisements. Now, it was actually a company called Fox IT that discovered this. And if you haven't heard about malicious advertisements, Basically, you probably have seen ads and websites. And of course, there's backends that are created so that these websites can dynamically
dynamically change the ads. You know, maybe one of the users, your meta tag shows that you're interested in gaming. So you'll get some ads that are more related to gaming. And a lot of times websites let the advertising networks handle this. It's really not up to them which ads show up there. In any case, Fox IT studied a campaign where attackers were actually going to legitimate ad serving companies and they pose using social engineering techniques as a normal marketer. But they actually, of course, hide malware in their ads. They use well known exploit frame, uh, frameworks. In this case, they used the Angular exploit kit to create ads that were really drive by downloads. Essentially, you'd go to a website. Uh, like java.com, one of these ads would pop up without you really paying attention. And behind the scenes, it's checking to see if your browser is running Flash, Java, or Silverlight. And of course, it's going to run some sort of exploit for whatever uh, product you might be running to forcefully make you download and install malware. In this case, it seemed to be pretty uh, typical spamming and botnet malware and infect your computer. And the moral of the story is, uh, if you've gone to any of these sites recently, Photobucket, Java.com, DeviantArt, etc., especially between the time period of, I think it was August 19th to August 22nd, you might want to check your computer. Now, the way you can protect yourself from drive-by downloads uh, in general is multifold. First of all, I always recommend having browser plugins or browser capabilities that block active scripting, things like JavaScript by default. While you're going to have to allow JavaScript on sub websites, really a lot of these malicious exploits require JavaScript to, to get their exploit working. So if you use plugins like NoScript, which block JavaScript by default, they might help you. On top of that, you you should use web security products. Like uh, WatchGuard has many different products like web blocker, reputation enabled defense, our intrusion prevention service, our anti-malware service. All of these are actually scanning the web content you go to, to look for zero day Java exploits that people might be using to infect your computer, or to look for the malware they're gonna actually try to force on your computer. And things like reputation enabled defense will keep you away from some of the bad drive by download sites. So consider using web security services that deeply scan all the websites you're going to. So the last and definitely biggest story this week is a big breach on a number of US banks. Late in the week, a story broke, I think it was by Bloomberg first, that a number of banks, JP Morgan Chase was named, but four other unnamed banks were apparently breached and allegedly Russian attackers stole gigabytes of sensitive information. And this information included things like your checking and saving account number and some of the information related to it. Certainly information that would be enough for people to actually empty uh, uh, accounts at these banks. So it is a very, very big breach. Reach. Now, there's not a lot of details known. These stories cited four different unnamed anonymous sources who were apparently uh, associated with the investigation of this breach. And uh, they don't share a lot of details on what was stolen other than they were account numbers involved and, and when it and how it happened. But there are a few details. Uh, one of the quotes that came out was apparently at least at one of the bank, the attack involved a zero day vulnerability on a website. So they don't say specifically it was a web application flaw. However, in my mind, I highly suspect it was a web application flaw like a SQL injection attack. So that's actually something to think about. Web application flaws are really the primary way bad guys steal data from us nowadays. So be sure uh, to do two things. One, make sure that your web coders understand secure coding. Really, the the, the main way to prevent web application flaws is to make sure that you have secure web code, that you validate user data uh, and do a number of different things to make sure bad guys can't take advantage of your web applications. But no one's perfect, so you will never probably have perfect web code. So another option you might consider is a web application firewall. These devices are not at all like traditional firewalls. Rather, they sit around your website and they basically pay attention to all the parameters that, that people try to enter as they uh, interact with your website to try to prevent these type of vulnerabilities.
Now the story also talked about some of these banks also having Zeus and Salidae infections at different locations internationally. These are two well, uh, you know, common well-known botnets, but they don't really say if these botnets were involved with the data leak. In any case, this is breaking big news. I'm sure the story will continue to develop over the weeks. And it's quite interesting because of all the different verticals I look at, banks tend to be one of the most secure. They're more secure than healthcare providers, and in my opinion, Opinion, they're more secure than a lot of government organizations because they deal with money they really do take security seriously so for bad guys to actually get into these banks and steal information is a big deal now a number of these stories are pointing to alleged Russian actors in this particular heist although it hasn't actually been confirmed in any way nonetheless a lot of news stories have mentioned that oh perhaps this this attack happens to be some sort of uh, a revenge based on our US sanctions on Russia. That is total hyperbole right now. There seems to be no evidence to support that. It was just something somebody said. In any case, this is a very interesting story. And the moral of this is be very careful with your public facing web applications. Definitely talk to your developers and make sure they understand secure coding. Point them to OWASP.org where they can learn a lot about a lot of secure coding practices. And if you have a lot of sensitive customer information on your website, consider web application firewalls. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you learned something interesting. And as you can probably guess, there's a ton of other security stories up there. So be sure to hit up the reference section in the blog post associated with this video. And to find that, please go to the WatchGuard Security Center blog where I post a ton of other stories. You can definitely subscribe to that blog to get more regular updates from us. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. And by the way, for the U.S. viewers out there, have a great uh, long holiday weekend and enjoy Labor Day. As always, thank you, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.